Friends, Wastelanders, Vault Dwellers, we are back. It is time again for another episode of the Fallout Lorecast. And I am your host, Tom or Robots. And with me, as always, is my co host, Laney or Neos Pandora. And we are here. We're back. We're back. I've, um, I've been moving my equipment around. I am now back in the uh, office room of the home of my of the home of my house instead of the bedroom. And we had some technical difficulties. So if you are tuning in live, on Twitch. Thank you for your patience. I uh, may got, got rid of the crackly poppy, poppy sounds. I, I might sound a little more roomy in my mic. I apologize for that. I still I need to kind of re-situate the room in order to be a little bit less echoey. But we'll get there. We'll get there. I hope this isn't uh, too terrible to listen to. Um, but Lainey, how are you doing? How are things? Oh, I'm just dandy. You're a dandy? Like like dandy boy apples. Like a dandy. Yankee Doodle dandy? Like you have dandy. macaroni in your cap? I always have macaroni in my cap. Good. That's good. Um, yeah, I, I keep it toasty. I don't know anybody who keeps macaroni in their cap, but you keep it toasty. Not only yeah. do you have macaroni in your cap, but you keep it toasty. Keep it toasty. Do you have like a heater? My head is the heater. You have a very warm head. Okay. It well, it's between my, my hair and the hat and then the sun goes on the hat, you know, and it heats oh. it up to black hat. You gotta, you gotta really think about how you're toasting your macaroons. Oh, they're macaroons. No. <laughs> <laughs> I have, I have, I now have way more questions than I started with. Um, but today's episode is not about keeping macaroons or macaroni in your hat. It is about a uh, a lovely town a level a lovely tourist destination in southern or actually uh, technically it's california but uh, the new vegas area and what are we talking about today laney today we're talking about nipton nipton in the bud we're talking about a massacre how fun yeah lighthearted things today right Good stuff. Um, so th- we're going to go over some details about what happens in Nipton. And if you guys know what happens in Nipton stays in. I, I don't know. Um, but before we get into the details, I wanted to review some of the uh, some of the real world connections to the location. We've been kind of doing this as we've been going over locations in New Vegas. And I thought this was interesting. So according to wikipedia actually let's uh before we get to the real world stuff let's talk a little bit about the in-game location so we can contrast it so let's start with that instead so um the town of san bernie is in sorry san bernino county california which is just below the border of nevada right it's like the the border right If, if you actually follow the locations on the map this and this is really cool about the game if you do go a little bit more south from the other locations we talked about places like good springs and the uh, correctional facility that becomes the powder gangers uh prison if you go a little bit more south you'll cross the border into california and nipton is located right there and it was originally founded in 1905 as a stop on the san pedro los angeles and salt lake railroad and this is this is the in-game stuff originally called Nippeno Camp following a nearby discovery of gold. The name was changed to Nipton when the San Pedro, Los Angeles and Salt Lake railroads merged with the Union Pacific Railroad around 1910, which coincides with some real world stuff. In addition to being a cattle loading station for several local ranches, the town and depot also actually we were talking about pronouncing words the way they are spelled depot. Uh, also supplied numerous mines in the area, becoming a social center for the sparse population of the region. It eventually became a tourist de- destination, offering hikers and travelers a place to restock, park their RVs, and set up their tents. This is pre-Great War. Those willing to test their luck could partake in the California State Lottery. Hold on to that and potentially win a jackpot worth millions of dollars. Also, let's talk about the real world stuff. So this is this is pretty cool. It's in the real world. It's an unincorporated community in the Ivanpah Valley in San Bernardino County, California. So same location, basically, with a population of about get this 15 to 20. This is a large happening stuff. This is like 
a few families live here kind of size of the place. It is located on the northeast border of the Mojave National Preserve, approximately 12 miles south of Prim, another place we get to visit in New Vegas, uh, Nevada, and Ivanpah Solar Power Facility. It is accessible via Nevada State Route 164, also known as Nipton Road. The mining camp, well, this is the real world side of this. The mining camp was established at the crossroads of two wagon trails. I love the idea of these old world places and locations being like, usually it's like a river and a highway or a crossing or a railroad. This is the crossing of two wagon stations. This is how tiny this location actually is and started out originally. The town was founded in February 9th, 1905. So as of today's date is over 115 years old with the coming of the first train on the newly constructed San Pedro, Los Angeles and Salt Lake Railroad. It was called Nipano Camp. So this that part of it is actually real following the discovery of gold. So, of course, and this is kind of late for the discovery of. Well, actually, it didn't doesn't say when the camp was established. So gold was discovered in the 1800s, of course, in uh, California. And then you had the gold rush. The name was changed to Nipton when the San Pedro, Los Angeles and Salt Lake Railroad was merged with the Union Pacific Railroad around 1910. That part is true as well. And it's a cattle loading station in September of 2017. Real world stuff again. Nipton was purchased by American Green Incorporated for five million dollars. Did you know you could buy a town for five million dollars? That doesn't seem like very a whole lot of money to buy an entire town, but it's only got what 15, 20 people there. So um, with plans to turn the town into get this a cannabis tourism destination. So now next time you play the game, you're going to you're going to see uh, everything going up in smoke and you're going to think about some other things that go up in smoke. The CEO of the company hoped to make this into the first pot town USA American Green Incorporated sold the town in March 2018, like a year later, uh, after failing to attract the capital investment necessary to continue the project. The town was sold to Delta International Oil and Gas for a total of. 7.7 million in debt assumption and Delta preferred stock along with a provision that it continued with the project to transform the 80 acre town on the edge of the Mojave desert into a cannabis themed resort. So what happened, right? As of November 16th, 2020, the town was listed for sale again for get this 2.75 million dollars. So wonderful investments. This is totally working off, working out for these companies. Hilarious, hilarious. So where is like the real world situation here with the town is uh, kind of interesting, you know, gold rush founding and, and those kinds of things and then potential cannabis resort um laney what what happened in the game location for nipton uh, was it as i don't know peaceful well <laughs> <laughs> well <laughs> so before uh the big event that we will get to it was a i mean it was a it was a nice little place it was a good a place for a Saturday night, I guess. You could go. You could have some fun times. Some, um, what do you mean by fun times? You could go like... So they uh, had... I mean... You know, go play oh, play pool with your friends and have a drink. That. You know, go bowling. I mean, if you want to, you could also take like some sex workers with you. They're, you know. Oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, so yeah, if you, if you want drugs, if you want sex, if you want... A fun night out, Nipton. That's the place to go. Yeah, the, uh, the mayor was kind of like, uh, "Let's just buy and sell anything in order to make some money." Right. right? So Joseph St- Stein, St- how S T E Y N Stein Stein Stein. So the mayor of Nipton, good old Joey boy, uh, decided that he wanted to make some good good money, and he invited both the Powder Gangers and the NCR. But how would you do that? Wouldn't they uh, literally fight each other? Wouldn't the NCR just arrest the Powder Gangers? Isn't the Powder Gangers they're from? They are. From yeah, they don't. They don't really get along, right? Like that's the whole right. thing. Is that we've talked about the Powder Gangers before, and so those two factions showing up in town at the same time probably not a good idea. Right. Yeah. So, uh, 
you have to do something sneaky. So good old Joey boy decides that he's going to invite the powder gangers to come in during the day and the NCR to come in during the night. And this is going to work flawlessly. And I guess it does because it is very lucrative for him until. Well, okay, um, so hold on. So this, this basically becomes a trade center for these groups, a place where um, they can trade to the town things. And then the other group can also trade to the town things so they can get things potentially from each other without knowing that they're actually trading with each yeah. other indirectly. So um, if you think about what that means, that means that powder gangers could then theoretically get a hold of NCR equipment or supplies that were traded to the town. Um, the NCR could get a hold of things like dynamite and, and that kind of stuff. If the powder gangers were trading it, it's kind of interesting to think that like, this is a uh, potential connection point for the, the various things in the two groups, then in some ways helping and supporting each other without even meaning to. Yeah, it's super weird. And it feels so risky for the mayor to have been like, I'm going to invite these guys over. But if it worked out, you know, it made some sense. It made some sense, if you know what I mean. It made some dollars and cents. I get I, I smell what you're cooking. No, no. I hear what you're ringing with your cash register. Uh, no. No. Ring. Ring ring. All right. So so what happens? So what happens next? So you guys know about Caesar's Legion. We haven't really talked about them yet on here. But I yeah, I did a little bit of stuff way back about a year and a half yeah. ago about uh Caesar's Legion, but we haven't re discuss them for the new Vegas stuff, which I'm sure we're gonna have to there's a lot more than what I originally talked about. So yeah, we'll we'll dig more into them for sure. But essentially they are a dictatorship uh, a totalitarian d- dictatorship that really believes in things like slavery, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. just t- just wiping out anything that does not abide by your standards, your rules, you right. know, big right. into that. Right. Um, and they, they all call him like- Kaiser, too. So it's. <laughs> they, they, they pronounce it yeah yeah it's I, every time i read it i say caesar's legion but like yeah like oh, in because, game it's yeah. it's yeah, yeah. right um, it obviously it's it is very much inspired by ancient rome uh julius caesar himself and it's it's a fun idea if you like things like slaves and utilitarian principles right but if you don't then that's not so fun anyway they have this uh, this group of spies, they call them f- fermentary somethings. Anyway, the best one, the highest ranking <laughs> the fermentary fermentarian. somethings. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> frumen- the, fermentarians, the which is an, a really interesting word, but yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. So, so the highest ranking of these people, the, fr- the highest ranking fermentarius, that's a single one, uh, is Vulpus and Colta. And he is the best spy in the Legion. Mm-hmm. And he had an eye out for Nifton because he didn't like the way that the mayor was, you know, right in the town. He didn't like how he was bringing in the powder gangers and the NCR. He didn't like all the things that they were selling. You know, not a big fan. So he devised a plan to just just mess it all up. Just flip the town totally upside down. Uh, but of course, he didn't start there. He had to ease into it. You got to convince the mayor first. So he goes to the mayor and he tells good old Joey boy that he (laughs) wants to bring everyone together. And of course, that sounds terrible. Mm -hmm. But remember what Joey boy likes? That good, good money. Good, good cheddar. Yeah. (laughs) And so Volpez and Colta gives him 8,000 caps. And because... Wait, pause. Pause. Uh, so can you imagine trying to carry 8,000 caps? It's a lot of caps. Ca- like a sack. You're like a Santa bag on your back. Like, how do you transport that? That's hilarious. How much does that actually weigh? It probably weighs a good a good number of pounds. I mean, caps aren't that heavy, but that many of them. How much does a bottle cap weigh? Cap so weigh. while you look that up, um, I want to I want to dig into the name uh, Frumentari, the Frumentarius. <laughs> Um, Frumentari was actually the uh, official in Rome that was um, uh, the, the one who collected wheat 
and also acted as the secret service in the second and third centuries. So this is this title actually makes sense for um, the kind of the role of this person. Um, they were also known as Volpes, V-U-L-P-E-S. And if you if you know any Latin names of animals that might be familiar, that's actually a canid uh, genus and a word that means fox. So there's some connection there as well with like this is a, a foxy person who works undercover for the government also make sure that you know taxes of wheat are collected those kinds of things so you can see why this person might be interested in making sure that things work correctly or the way they want with nipton in order to get what they want out of the town so kind of an interesting concept there so it turns out uh 8, caps is about 40 pounds yeah, yeah, I figured it would be a solid. I mean, it's not super heavy, but you have to box the caps. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's pretty. All right. Good way so, there. Yeah. Anyway, he promises him eight thousand caps, which of course he agreed to, and the mayor decided that he was going to abandon the town. He was going to leave whatever was going to happen to happen. He had eight thousand caps. He was going to start fresh somewhere else, and that's all fine and dandy, except for what the heck mayor <laughs> you sabotaged your whole town and so when everyone got there um they were all corralled to the center of the town where if you approach the town in the game you will see them um and everyone was given lottery tickets these lottery tickets were for the big ranch nevada state lotto um and this is really interesting because nevada has a ban on state-run lotteries and so this could not exist in the real world but um, california but, doesn't right and so what's interesting about nipton is that because it's like right on the border between nevada and california it has a great turnout for lottery tickets it's like the place to go for yeah. your lottery tickets. yeah well it makes sense because um, if, if if you're in vegas and you want to be gambling but you can't do a lottery because they would rather have your money, sh money show up at the casino than just drive over the border and gamble with your lottery tickets in California. It's kind of like um, some of the states, some of the southern states, I know for sure. Like, for example, uh, I don't know, like when I was a kid growing up, uh, Georgia had um, bigger fireworks. They had like less restrictions on fireworks than Florida did. So I knew people who would pick up fireworks in Georgia and then come down to Florida in order to be able to shoot off fireworks that otherwise they couldn't get here, um, which doesn't seem totally seem very legal, but I guess or safe or safe, but their parents <laughs> let them do it. So I don't know. But yeah, it's, it's that kind of thing. Cross the border. You can do other stuff where you can't do it here. So um, what happens with the the lottery or is there anything else to cover with that? Oh, I mean, so much happens with the lottery. But that's like, <laughs> that's the whole, that's the, the main enchilada. That's, I'm just going to keep butchering sayings every episode. That's the main enchilada. Hey, <laughs> you're my main enchil enchilada. <laughs> All right. Well, now I will tell you what, why don't we go to the middle of the show and then we'll come back and we'll talk about what exactly this lottery was. And did people win lots of caps or something else? I have a feeling you guys know, but we'll get into a little bit more details. All right. We'll be right back. Hello there, old chat. Good to see another of General Atomic's finest still eager to serve. This is the middle of the show. Welcome, everybody, to the middle of the show. This is the part where I get to thank you guys for helping to support the show. Every single one of you, everyone from our highest tier patron, uh, Liberty Pie, Pie Man. Thank you for supporting the show. You are amazing to our tier five patrons and uh, all the rest of our patrons, all the way down to the people who just, you know, love the show and tell their friends. So thank you. Thank you to all of you guys. You guys are amazing. Let's call out our tier five patrons as well. We have a Robob. Actually, we only have Robob. Robob's our only tier five patron right now. And then we've got uh, Pie Man, who is our Liberty Prime. Amazing, guys. Thank you for your support. Thank you for everyone for being here. If you are interested in helping to support the show, please go to patreon.com slash fallout lorecast and check out the different tiers and you can sign up and get ad free episodes, episodes early, um, all sorts of stuff. There's uh, discounts on the store where you can buy crazy shirts that we make and, you know, all sorts of stuff. I'm just going to, you know, 
stumble over my words like Lainey does. And um, and if you want to help support the show in other ways, uh, a wonderful way you could do that is if you decide to watch us on Twitch and you happen to have an Amazon Prime account, that means that you get a free subscription every month that you get to choose to send to a Twitch streamer so you could send us your amazon prime you could do it to the robots radio twitch channel you could do it to the neos pandora twitch channel however you want that also helps support and there's uh you know there's tons of things you can do to help us out and we would really really appreciate it we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you guys and your support and your love and thank you so so very much if you have any questions about nuka world i'd be delighted to answer them all right so they put together a lottery and they're like hey come on over we're giving away a million dollars right a million smackers give away some cheddar is that what but, happened uh, i wish that's what happened <laughs> unfortunately no so they gave out these lottery tickets and they had a lottery um and they essentially called out random people for terrible terrible things and we'll get into what those things are but first let's talk about what this lottery was like what this lottery emulated we already mentioned that the legion uh is emulating ancient roman uh army stuff. Tr traditions <laughs> like traditions, traditions and themes and, and those kinds of things yeah for sure yes. <laughs> those are the words <laughs> like where where is a thesaurus when i need it <laughs> um so they did something that was very similar to the decimation, the ancient Roman decimation, where when so certain soldiers would act up or disobey orders or just mess up really badly, they mm -hmm. would take them and they would put them all together and they'd essentially hold a lottery where one out of every 10 was selected randomly to be brutally murdered by the rest of the group. Wonderful. And this was called yeah. decimation. And so the next decimation. time you hear somebody say like, oh, that army got decimated. That means only one tenth of them were destroyed. People use the by word decimate. Yeah, by each other. <laughs> the people, and, and it was used in terms of like by the enemy army and things like that, too. In the lot in this lottery system is actually each other. Um, but yeah, people use the word decimation to mean like, oh, it was completely wiped out or something. It really only means one tenth. Um, which which is a substantial amount of loss. Uh, and this is another thing a lot of people don't realize is that in some of these old conflicts, um, the uh, having a tenth of your group killed was actually a significant amount because oftentimes enemies would disengage before they were able to completely rout the other army. So you would pull back um, and it was usually the uh, the morale of your troops that would end the combat, not necessarily the fact that everyone was dying. So uh, things were a little bit different in, in combat back in those in those days. Um, but yeah, so they they set everybody up for this lottery. One in 10 people were selected and then everybody in the group would murder or kill the one person. And that was their lottery system. Now, what they're doing here isn't exactly a decimation lottery. It's a little bit different, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I'll get into that. Um, but I want to mention uh, Polybius, an ancient Roman writer, who basically this guy, what he did at the time was he would write like stories about what was happening at the time. You got to keep track of what ancient Rome was up to. You know, so if you read anything that Polybius has written, it is all about the happenings of the time. It's like getting the news. It's like the ancient Roman news. Mm -hmm. But he described the decimation, this practice, as uh, d just terrifying, specifically because the danger and dread of drawing the fatal lot affects all equally, as it is uncertain on whom it will fall. And it's true. And this is already terrifying in the ancient Roman sense. But the way that they emulate this in New Vegas is even more terrifying. Mm -hmm. um, so what the Legion did is they drew these random lottery tickets and amongst the people that were there it was not only the ncr and the powder gangers but the people of the town as well the people of nipton including the mayor who did not escape <laughs> he ended up stuck as well and um since anyone was po like could possibly be drawn it was just as likely that you would lose an influential member of the group or 
um it's one that meant a lot to you you know family yeah. friends yeah a favorite uh, a favorite like if, if there's like the really nice guy who's like everybody's friend and is always there for everyone well that person get, could get drawn and killed like killed yeah um it, or you know the complete douchebag that everyone doesn't like like it could be any of them so right yeah you could lose your grandma you could lose grandma the down the road oh the grandma Aww. yeah <laughs> my grandma do but, <laughs> but it's so true because you could kill anybody and you don't know who's gonna go it is terrifying because you have no idea how it will impact the community especially in the long run and in this case they wanted to destroy these communities they were fed up with the way they were running their business mm -hmm. and just wanted to destroy them and they did so what they did when they drew these tickets is anyone who had a ticket that was drawn would get either decapitated crucified or enslaved which is just fun <laughs> none of those seem like fun options <laughs> those all sound bad um oh. yeah decapitation is probably the best maybe i don't like uh, we could debate this like decapitation is like a quick death right oh, sure it's oh, just sure. boom you're dead crucifixion well, kind of. on the other well kind of it depends on how well they cut through your head right yeah. um, and if they torture you before that and all that uh crucifixion is it is basically death by environmental torture because right. you're you're strung up um you know w whether you are impaled onto a a cross which was most likely a t-shape historically it was not like a like a cross like we think of in religious contexts um they got that wrong uh it's well it, there was a head thing sometimes above it which created the top of the the t but it was actually more like a capital t and oftentimes people were just like strapped like bound with a rope or or something and there was a platform for their feet but in some cases there wasn't so the weight of your body would pull yourself up so you'd constantly mm -hmm. do this and imagine holding your arms up just hold your arms up for like you know five minutes eventually the blood starts to drain out of it they start to go numb right so your body would go numb you'd be out in the in the weather in the environment you'd be starving you would be dehydrating in the sun like have you ever gone a day without drinking water like it feels terrible but in the midst of this you would be out there um eventually parts of your body may start to rot as you as you start to die so birds might pick at your skin like there, there's all sorts of terrible things that happen just from environmental exposure not to mention if you were actually wounded as well while being crucified um and if you were of if you were pretty hardy you could go three or four days before you die of um you know not having enough water so or longer potentially like if they're giving you if they're giving you something to drink which of course you're going to want because you're thirsty it would it would make the the torture last longer because they're not feeding you but they might give you some water from like a sponge on a stick or something and then you would survive even longer so you can imagine you could be there for like a week two weeks before you die it's it's such a horrible horrible death um and then there's and you enslavement can't take people down either you can't take people down when people are crucified and they're up, especially if they're like impaled on something, mm -hmm. well, definitely if they're impaled on something, if you pull it out, they will just bleed out. But for people who've been there, especially for a couple of days hanging, your body is just, you just become so broken. You know, you're constantly weighing yourself down. You have all the environmental effects. You have anything else that might have been done before or while you're on, you know, mm -hmm. up there. Right. And if you let them down, they will feel all of that right the only thing kind of holding them together is the fact that they're staying still <laughs> yeah. and that they're just yeah. stuck there all of a sudden as the blood rushes go, through the rest of your body again and yeah, yeah. and then all of a sudden uh, every, all the pain and you're, you're no longer numb um yeah it's it's no good uh but enslavement's not great either you know enslavement no. usually means torture and all sorts of other terrible terrible things so okay so what happens what happens after this well what happens after this is they went through all those people, right? They decapitated the ones that they were going to decapitate. Also, did you know if you get decapitated, you can still, like, you're still alive in your noggin, just your noggin, because obviously, decapitated. Yeah, for a few seconds. They, they did a test, uh, uh, the, yeah, like the French. Yeah, yeah, the French, uh, toward the end of their decapitation times, historically, uh, there was a doctor who uh, talked with a potential prisoner who was going to be de decapitated and said, mm -hmm. after you're decapitated, blink and like, like blink as many times as you can until you can't blink anymore. 
And yeah, it was it was a number of seconds afterwards that that he was able to blink. Um, so, yeah, there's still something going on in there until eventually, you know, your blood drains out enough that you can't see anything anymore. So, yeah, yeah that sounds fun, too. Pretty, pretty Good bad. times. Good They're times. They're terrible. So, yeah, after they decapitated, crucified and enslaved whoever they intended to, um, they... <laughs> they just they didn't stop there <laughs> um the next person they drew was the mayor right so they got they drew a bunch of people they did all their stuff and then they were decided to call out the mayor and instead of decapitating him or crucifying him or enslaving him he had a very special death where they burned him alive on a pile of tires cool yeah that sounds good too yeah (laughs) sounds awful can you imagine like the burning rubber (laughs) yeah no (laughs) no No. funny funny other other side note is that this town the actual town of nipton has some sort of connection to burning man festival (laughs) where it's uh, a place where they i don't know sell things or, or help support the festival or whatever so that's funny burning man i wonder if that was influence so there's all sorts of interesting influences here. There's the the lottery, uh, <laughs> Volpez in Colta's uh, title and oh, name. Yeah, there's all sorts <laughs> of stuff. So keep going. Yeah. So, <laughs> so of course they burn him alive on the pile of tires because uh, Vulcan and Colta really believed Volpe- that Volpez, not Vol- Vulcan. Vol- oh, Vulcan. <laughs> <laughs> oh no he's not from star trek <laughs> dude i wrote that in the notes too <laughs> yeah, i think it's probably okay. an auto auto fix yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> my brain was like yes this is correct Vul- vulcan <laughs> yep mm-hmm. yeah confirmation okay. fallout is in the star trek universe <laughs> all righty so because he believed that the mayor was the cause of everything that was wrong with Nipton, he deserved this death, and it was big final final death for this batch. But the deaths didn't end there. Mm. He also decided that because the people who watched the other people die didn't get upset enough <laughs> that they were all selfish, he thought that they were more scared for themselves than they were for other people, and therefore they deserved to die too. <laughs> so, but what isn't that a natural reaction? You yeah, see, you see you somebody murdering everybody, <laughs> and yeah, you feel bad for the people who are getting murdered. But then you most like that's just human nature. That's just like if you are a living creature on the planet, your first reaction will be for sustaining your own existence most of the time. And then sometimes, as human beings, we sacrifice ourselves for other people because we have some sort of greater purpose or we love them or, or you know, something more than ourselves at stake. But in this kind of situation, there's nothing more at stake. It's just everyone's dying. So you would be like, oh, God, I hope I don't die. <laughs> right, you can't really fight back. Right. <laughs> what are you supposed to do? So anyway, he he believed that, though. And after the initial killings, decided to do another drawing where they drew um, multiple people for these well, at least for third place. They drew a first, second, and third place lottery ticket winners. Mm-hmm. And they had multiple winners for third. I think just one for second and one for first, but I could be wrong. So the third place winners were all enslaved. Yes. Yeah, one, there was one for first, for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, I know that. And one for second as well, I believe. Okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so all of the third place winners were enslaved. Oh, this is the part of the show where Lainey disconnects momentarily and then reconnects. So stay tuned. She'll be right back. Oh, she's back. Look at that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Enslaved. Second place, uh, they had their legs crippled. Great. Still no good. Love it. But way I better than some sure of the other one things. Guy. Yeah. Second place is just one dude yep. and he survives, yep. obviously, and you can go talk to him mm-hmm. later. I'm remembering now. Yeah. Um, and then first place was spared and freed how exciting hey. <laughs> so it's kind of a reverse <laughs> decimation in that like everyone gets killed except for the poor cripple guy and then or enslaved and then yeah. the one guy gets freed and you know no harm done yes yeah and yeah. that makes it all worth it yeah but then right? that was it right that was it they just that was the last thing they did nothing else 
Well, then they had to tidy up, obviously. So they uh, they burnt the whole town down. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and it was, I mean, they, they really burned it down. You could see the black smoke for miles uh, to the extent that there's a NCR like watchtower or something a ways away and they notice the smoke there. And if you go and talk to them, they'll like ask you what is going on, you know, <laughs> like why is a whole town in flames, a town where they know probably that they have people there. They were invited there, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty terrible. Yeah, pretty terrible stuff. So when you're playing the game and you come up on the town, you'll come across the uh, the lottery tickets on the ground. You'll come across uh, the the free guy who kind of tells you what's going on. Um, this this event is kind of connected to everything else. It's also, I believe, meant to be your first instance of meeting the Legion and getting a sense of what they're about. And oh, it yeah. really colors your expectations. So. Uh, when people say like, oh, I sided with Kaiser's Legion, I'm just like, really, really? Yeah. <laughs> this is the kind of stuff they well, do. And that was my first experience with them, too, was like, what happens at Nipton? Yeah, same. And actually, we didn't talk about what it's like to actually go there. So by the time that you get there, right, all of this has already been done. You run it into the first place winner while you're going in and he basically mm. is like, hey, get out of here. Like, yeah, he, like yeah. he's excited. He's like, oh, I survived. Like he's celebrating, but he's <laughs> right. running away. Right, right, right. right. Um, and you get there and obviously, you know, it's all on fire. It's all burning. And you walk up and the Legion is still there. And there are two rows of all the people crucified and they're still alive. And you can choose if you interact with them or not. You obviously can't take them down, but you can mercy kill them. Um, which is honestly in my opinion what you like if you're going to interact with them what you should do <laughs> yeah because, it, seems, it seems like the the merciful thing would be to put right. them out of their misery um otherwise they're just gonna stay there you can't take them down right but what's interesting is that it doesn't give you a karma uh you don't get a positive or negative effect on your karma either way to, no, no matter what you decide with that um mm -hmm. which is interesting um so there's some other notes here these these come from the fandom site about some other little quirks and things with this section of the game. So it turns out that you can actually take them down by using the Ranger takedown ability, which you can unlock in certain parts of the game. It's like a rush forward and like knock somebody over kind of ability. Um, and what it does is it actually knocks them off the, the crucifixes and they land on the ground and then they get up and all they say is, I have to get going. And they leave. <laughs> which is hilarious they just walk away like they're fine um, <laughs> which is which is funny um some when you're in the town uh, some companions will comment on the crucified townsfolk so Cass will say something like should we cut the people down um there's a must mr gutsy robot in one of the buildings and that mr gutsy will respawn every three hours um so uh if you don't want to really use one of the, that house as a storage place because you'll just have to constantly deal with mr gutsy respawning um the this is interesting the background music we're talking on the discord about this a little bit um some of the music in the games and things uh, based on the previous episode we did and the um the background music in in the town is city of the dead which comes from fallout one it was the music hey. used when you visit necropolis it also was used in Navarro and Vault 15 in Fallout 2. So this was a track that gets reused. And like we mentioned before, some of the music from Fallout 1 is super like ominous and uh, environmentally like uh, stressful. So check that out if you want to look it up. City of the Dead was the name of that. Um, there's a bark scorpion which may randomly spawn upon re returning via fast travel. So if you fast travel back to Nipton and leave the crucified people up on their, their posts, um, if they're alive, it may approach each of them and sting them by attacking the post. And then the powder gangers who are being crucified will fall to the ground. So <laughs> the scorpion will go just attack each of them. Um, Legion mongrels may respond if you revisit after the events, uh, but then they'll be friendly. So they'll be good, good boys. And you can you can be friends with the little uh, Legion mongrels. The courier can walk through the flames of the town without being taking damage, which I feel like I noticed at some point and just didn't think about it anymore. But that's kind of weird. <laughs> In spite of Volpe's 
in in sultas in cultas i don't know how to pronounce this uh claim that the townsfolk were passive and cowardly there are signs in one of the houses and in the trailer park area that at least some of the citizens fought back and killed several legionnaires such examples consist of one deceased citizen who wielded a laser rifle with an ash pile in front of him bearing the remains of a legionary recruit so if you look around the town, there's some of these buildings and trailers and things, and you can see the remains of different th- groups and people, uh, some NCR in one of them as well. Even though, uh, and this is the last one, even though both of Boxcar's legs are crippled from the lottery, he will stand up and engage in combat if attacked, but has a limp. <laughs> so I guess they're not completely broken. They're just beat up. I don't know, man. I love uh, these games are so complex and that's one of the wonderful things about them is, is the complexity. But of course it leads to these weird kinds of things mm-hmm. that can happen when stuff crosses in ways that the developers didn't necessarily intend. That's so, so funny. Yeah. So some really cool stuff. And uh, what I love about this is that like initially when I thought about, okay, what, what are we going to do this week? And I was thinking through playing through the game. I was like, okay, the town of Nipton comes up pretty soon after some of the events that we talked about already that would be interesting but is there really a whole lot here because for the most part you come across a town that's burning and there's crucifixions happening and there was a lottery and the legion basically did stuff and you know there there were things going on with the town beforehand but i was like this isn't a very big topic i also don't think it'll be a very popular topic i hope there's enough there but laney and i did research on this and there's there's a lot of stuff here. There's like, and that's what's so wonderful about this game. And a lot of the games in the series is that underneath each of these settings, there's so much there, even just the location, a little bit about the characters, a little bit about the things that can happen while you play through the game. There's a lot of content there. And it's actually really interesting. A lot of these connections to real world things, a lot of inspiration. You can tell that the developers, when they were thinking about where to go, went on a map and they were like okay what if we add nipton in what's going on at nipton and they were like okay there's these things and those things influenced the way that they were telling a story and they're like well what if the legion showed up here and had a lottery because the people go to the town for a lottery what if the per- the person who's in charge of what happens at that location is his name is volpez because that's another name for his title for the title of the kind of legionary that would be doing these things like you see all these connections come through and and it's so cool when you put them all together and you realize that like there's a lot of thought that goes into the design of this game so i know that shouldn't be a surprise but there's something there's something satisfying about even a little place like this that really doesn't have a huge bearing on the rest of the game still has that level of depth to it the next time someone asks me about New Vegas or if I've played it, which happens a lot unrelated to this podcast, actually, uh-huh. especially now that I work at a game store, um, I'm going to tell them that my favorite character is Vulcan and Colta. <laughs> <laughs> Vulcan and Colta. <laughs> You're just going to, oh, man. <laughs> I'll be like, who? What? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That's funny. funny. That's funny. Um, I wonder if you can hear this if I play it. This is the quote at the... Uh, Oh, actually, I can't play City of the Dead. I don't know that I'll have the rights to do that, but I can play the quote oh. here uh, from Volpez in Colta. Oh, nope, you guys can't hear that. Why can't you hear that? Hold on. Let me look. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set this up real quick. Ah, that's why. Okay, hold on one second. I got this. Here, let's try it right now. Based and corrupt. Uh, go back. Oh, poop. Let me <laughs> let me refresh the page. Here we go. Nipton was a wicked place, debased and corrupt. It served all comers, so long as they paid. Profligate troops, powder gangers, men of the Legion, such as myself. The people here didn't care. It was a town of whores. For a pittance, the town agreed to lead those it had sheltered into a trap. Only when I sprang it did they realize they were caught inside it, too. So, yeah. I didn't hear it at all. You couldn't hear it at all? Really? (laughs) No. (laughs) Oh, you know what? It's because uh, it's because the game sound isn't going through to you, but it's going through to the stream. Um, Wow. Yeah. yeah. Now you You can hear that. Yeah. Now now secrets. You you won't know it. It's just one of the one of the lines from. I'll um, never know it. 
from Volpez Inculta. Yeah, interesting. It is an interesting <laughs> character. Um, I'm wondering who the voice actor is, but I don't see it in the wiki. Mm, I wish it would list that. Oh, well. Oh, that's it. All right, guys. Well, thanks for <laughs> thanks for being here. I think that's that's it for this episode. Um, Lainey, what else do you have going on? Anything you want to you want to shout out? Works going good. Works going Selling good. Selling all those all those video games. I am. Yesterday, what did I sell? I sold someone uh, Zumba for the Wii. <laughs> and I, I remember very when that came fun. out, and that was like a oh my god, that was very popular. All right, let me tell you guys a thing. So, because of the pandemic, right, lots of people went out and bought Wiis, like cla- like original Wiis, right? Not mm. Wiis. Okay. Not Switches. Wiis. And they got Wii Sports. So, Wii Sports is a high, or not Wii Sports, Wii Fit or Wii, Wii, Wii Fit. Sports? Wii Fit to work out or Wii Sports because they like playing Wii Sports? One of the two. I can't remember which one. You guys do do some research on this also. Because one of those games is now selling for like $50 a piece back at like full because price the demand is like insane right now so oh. if you have a wii and you're not playing your wii games anymore it might be worth looking into you know seeing if you can ebay get the a thing. Little, little cash out of them yeah. yeah 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 i mean heck you could ebay that and then buy another full game yeah like a, a new one <laughs> that's yeah that's it's a bad deal. definitely worth looking at like we it, we have come far enough away from the Wii at this point from when it originally released that like those games are now becoming older. Mm-hmm. So some of them are going to be valuable. It's worth kind of going through what you have and seeing, you know, what you got going on there. And then of course some of them are gonna be worth absolutely nothing. So it yeah, just depends. Totally. totally. Yeah. No demand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it makes sense. Um well cool. That's 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 man, who knew? Yeah. I guess it makes sense because it's hard to get some of the new consoles. Um, so why not? Why not go back to that other yeah. stuff? Like, makes sense. Anything else going on? Not much. I was going to stream after this, but I have not been feeling good today. Oh, uh, so, yeah. Bummer. Yeah. Bummer, dude. It actually is a big bummer. I was like ready. I was oof. You I were oof. Ready. You were oof and ready. I was oof. I was oofing. Oof and ready. <laughs> Let's see. What do I have going on? I've, I've like I mentioned at the beginning, I moved down back into the office. I need to. You probably can hear the dogs barking. I um I need to reset up the office and actually like, you know, make it work again for recording. I I think it's okay enough, but I, you know I want to make some improvements. Um, I also moved all the desks around and and everything, so everything looks a little bit different. But um, yeah. Whoa! Did you hit your? I punched. You punched I punched it? it. Yeah, I do that yeah. too sometimes. But yeah, that's that's what I got going on. Um, the Robots Radio Rocket Club is doing awesome. We got all sorts of Fallout shows on there, so go check them out. There's a whole list of them in the Discord, and um, uh, I've been doing the Robots Radio show during the day at noon. I missed the last few days because of you know moving stuff around and kind of working on my setup. But um, that's you know the show where we do some news stuff and we talk about you know, the hottest takes on all the news in the middle of the day. And then we hang out and talk with some of the other hosts from the show. Um, I have a feeling that show is going to continue to evolve. I want to be able to do it regularly and I may make it like a, not necessarily noon thing, but I might push it back to maybe two or three and then do that and then go right from that into playing games afterwards because I play games with uh, Kirby Chew, um, your little, your little brother at around yeah, around this time it's, it's like 3 15 <laughs> right now yeah um so we'll see we'll see i'll keep i'll keep evolving it we'll figure it out but um that's what i got going on and i think what i'll do after this stream so don't go anywhere chat is i'll uh play some games with kirby chew and we'll we'll do some other streaming oh and other big news the fallout community uh stream team was announced and i am one of 40 members of the fallout community stream team which is super cool if you want to you can see it underneath the the player right now you can see that that is the team that i'm currently connected with and you can click that and you can check out all the different people on the fallout community stream team like there's a bunch of them already streaming right now which is super cool so go check that out um this is going to be exciting because we're going to be doing like giveaways and events together and all sorts of fun things. So uh, definitely come back and join me for some Fallout streams and things like that. And I think that's it for today's episode. Thanks, everybody, for being here. Stay tuned. I will be back in a little bit. I'm going to go go away and I'll be back in just a few minutes to play some games with you guys. Lainey, 
Have a wonderful day. Chat, thank you for being here. Everybody, thank you for listening, and especially thank you to our patrons. You guys are amazing. All right, let's finish up the show. You guys have a safe week. We'll talk to you later. Bye. To plug into everything else we're doing, check out robotsradio.net. Also, look up the Robots Radio YouTube for videos about Fallout and other things. And check us out on Twitter, twitter.com slash robotsradio. You've been listening to a Robots Radio podcast. Smart shows for interesting people. Check out all the shows at robotsradio.net.